Hey everybody, this is Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com, and I have a very special guest here today. This is John Lane. He's the general manager for the Pilot Fine Writing Division for Pilot USA, and he has some very amazing pens that he's here showing us our team today, and I thought while we're here, you know, John agreed to sit down and do this video with us. So, John, thank you so much for being here and for agreeing to do this. Brian, I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. So, nice to be here. Absolutely. So, for those who don't know who you are, um, can you tell us a little bit about your background and, and what you have to do with Pilot and Miki? Uh, I started with Pilot in 1988, um, selling 98 cent ballpoint pens up and down Interstate 5 between Washington State and Oregon. Um, always heard about this line called Pilot Prime Line, and in 1994, at a national sales meeting in San Francisco, we launched Namiki. Namiki is the name of Pilot's founder, Ryosuke Namiki, and as a salesman, I found it would be a challenge when they handed me a $6,000 pen, and I'd been used to selling 98-cent ballpoint pens to go out and sell them. So It's a bit of a stretch, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Namiki has been here since 94, and it has evolved into a uh, um, quite a nice business, and it's, uh, as you'll see from some of the pens that we'll show you, it's, uh, it's an art form, um, to be sure. So, um, how old is Namiki? Can you tell us a little bit about the, the history there? Pilot started in 1918. Um, and we started making um, fine pens in the mid-40s when Mr. Namiki uh, asked Alfred Dunhill to help him out and they started combining the things and the Dunhill Namiki line came out and started making the different Machia pens, some of the other fine writing instruments and again it evolved to where it is now. Very cool. Let's talk a bit about the pens a little bit. now. Um, you're actually the one, for those of you who are uh, familiar, we put out a video, a Pilot USA Tour video. Uh, you were the one that actually hosted us mm -hmm. down there and you showed us some of these incredible pens. Half of them we didn't even know what we were looking at because it's just, these pens are so out of this world mm -hmm. compared to what you normally would see and compared to what we've always offered. Um, so this has been in the works for, for several months. Um, and I'd like to kind of break down and explain kind of different techniques that there are for each of these pens. So you've got an assortment of pens here that you've uh, you so graciously laid out for us here. Mm -hmm. So could you mind just kind of walking us through and, and sharing what you know? Well, we've got several different models, uh, several different sizes of pens, and Machia is a art form that goes back to the seventh century. Uh, this particular pen is in the Emperor series. Mm -hmm. Takes about four months to make this pen. Uh, it's very limited quantities, actually. The quantities are just primarily what we order. Japan does not carry any inventory on these pens. Mm. And so when we place our order, um, we're just going to get what we ordered. Wow. There are several different types of Machia. Uh, this features a Taka Machia finish, which is a raised finish, meaning that there's more layers of lacquer. And the lacquer that goes on is the Urushi lacquer that comes from the Urushi tree that's indigenous in Japan. You can actually feel it, too, I mean, when you're when you're touching it, it's, it's definitely like a three-dimensional kind of feel. Yeah, the pattern starts out and it's slowly built up. Now, how many layers of lacquer are we talking about here when they do this to get it raised like that? This particular one, I believe that there's at least 40 layers of lacquer on it. Wow. And it takes four months to make. A lot of it is the drying time. When the artist starts out, you might start out making, starting with a dozen, and by the time he gets from one to 12, number one is dry, and he can apply another layer of lacquer and another layer of pigments. And this is a huge pen, too. I mean, I have very large hands, so maybe it doesn't look quite as alarmingly large when I'm holding it. But I mean, the nib, uh, this is not your normal size nib. No, this is a number 50 nib, which is uh, currently the largest nib made. And uh, at Pilot, the artists expect all of these pens to be used, made to be written with. So you wouldn't post a cap, but as you can feel, uh, it's very well balanced in your hand. It is, yeah, and it's surprisingly light for the size that it is, at least this particular pen. This particular pen is made out of ebonite, so it does keep its balance. If it was made out of brass like some of the other ones that we'll, we'll show, it would be very top-heavy. And how much would somebody expect to pay for a pen like this? That particular pen is $10,000. Okay, so I don't want to drop it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, what kind of person is buying a $10,000 pen? I mean, this, is it, are people actually writing with these pens or is it really more of a piece of art at this point? Um, I have collectors that um, both write with them and showcase them. There's a collector that I, I sold a pen to last year and he asked me, how do you fill it? And to fill this particular pen, you take the nib off and it's an eye drop full and it holds about a a little less than two eyedrops. 
and the pen goes, the nib goes back on. See the yellow ring on there. And then the back end opens up to allow a little air to go through. And then when you're through writing with it, if you want to clean it out, you pull that out and you can flush the, the ink system. Okay. And one thing I've noticed, you know, handling a couple of these now, whenever you line it back up, it always lines up perfectly. Exactly. So explain to me here, because there's these symbols on here. Now, it's individuals that are working on these pens, but can you explain to me what these characters are? This is, they're all individually done. Uh, there are some that a group makes that we'll talk about in a little bit, but um, this is the Machia Guild that the artist belongs to, and then this is his signature and his uh, crest. Okay. And they're all very proud of what they do. It, uh, again, some of these artists have been uh, um, doing pens for 20, 25 years. Uh, it's, it's a family business. One of our um, artists, Mishi Fumi, his grandfather was, a, was an artist and pilot. Wow. And how many artists do you have there? I mean, is it like a whole, f you know? Currently we have four Machia artists, but then there's also uh, independent artists that come in and propose different designs to pilot. Um, and then they go before a committee and it's decided whether or not they'll take him, okay. whether it'll be an in-stock model or whether it'll be one of our limited editions that uh, we do every year. Okay, but it's not a, I mean, this is a pretty exclusive group that we're talking about here. It is, it is. Uh, let's talk about the, some of the other models we have. Uh, the next one here is a Yukari Royale uh, that's a little bit smaller. This does have a brass barrel. This one is uh, called the Parrot and the Peach. Mm -hmm and features a little bit smaller nib. This particular pen retails for 6500 And what we try to do, Brian, is we, we try to rotate these out of the collection every three years. The patterns are retired and we bring new ones in. Wow. Now how many of these pens might they make? It's primarily what we order because as I said, we don't carry any inventory. Um, so it's whatever Europe orders, whatever Singapore orders, and whatever uh, is ordered in the domestic market, which, which is Japan. And then of course what we order. Um, usually we get probably 10 or 12 of a model when it comes in and then we reorder depending on how sales are. Fortunately, we don't have a lot of bad ones. <laughs> uh, have a lot of designs that aren't really sought after, so it's, it's still a very popular market. What are some of the most popular designs that have come out over the years? Like what tends to be most our, desired? Our first limited edition was the Yukari size, which we'll get, we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, that was the White Tiger of Asia. Um, that's very popular. Uh, the, uh, the Great White Shark was an emperor size. That was very popular. Mm. Um, the 90th anniversary pen, <clears throat> excuse me, that was very popular. So it just it just depends on what the design is. Some aren't so, aren't so popular, but we've had a good run with these. So who comes up with these designs? I mean, do you have any input into it, or is it? Uh... No, these are strictly done by Japan. Uh, the product planning group there um, takes um, takes some time, depending on whether it's going to be a limited edition or whether it's going to be a, a, an addition to the line. Uh, so they're primarily responsible for that. Okay, and I imagine the artists weigh in quite a bit on this too, because they do. If you're going to be working on a pen for four months, right. You want to make sure you're looking at something that you... And they want to make sure that they're able to. to do it as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the designs are very difficult to do. Um, the Emperor Goldfish, which is, which is in the line which I don't have here with me, is very difficult. That's why it's $15,000. Wow. This is the Chrysanthemum Dew. I mean, these look amazingly intricate. And again, it's got the artist signatures there. I see that and it's inlaid with rodin or abalone. Mm. Wow. And these are filled with a uh, piston converter. Oh, I didn't know that. And this one feels a bit heavier too. That's a brass barrel. Okay. So most of these are gonna be brass except for the largest Correct. one. Yes, okay. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, the next line is the Yukari line, which is, uh, of all the Machiers, is the most popular. Um, they're lower in price. Uh, the designs are a little less intricate. 
Um, this particular one is the Rock Garden. We introduced that two years ago. Mm -hmm. Very popular. And it depicts a uh, tr traditional Japanese rock garden. Hmm. Now I notice here there's only one line of signatures instead of two. Correct. That's, this signifies that a group, or the word is kokakai in Japan, did it. So I could be working on this, mm -hmm. and then I'd be able to hand it to you. Okay. You would do a little work on it. Um, and then it would go around to maybe th three or four artists who would do it, and so that okay. way, just the uh, just the group signatures on, not the individual. Okay, so one person might focus on the rock, another person might focus on different right. components to it. Okay, how common is that versus you know one artist doing the whole pen? Well, they can do more this way because these aren't as intricate a design. So the Yukaris are, are less are less expensive. This is fourteen hundred dollars again versus ten thousand dollars, and so okay. we need to make more of these. Um, to make up for the collectors. I see. And then this one's got kind of a mixture. It's yes, got, that's the herb little... decoration. Okay. And the nice thing about these pens, when they have the, the, the rod in them, uh, there's no two pens that are alike. Mm. They may have the same pattern, but with different, different shells and different color shells that go in. Wow. Beautiful. All right, what's next here? And the, the last uh, design in the, in the Machier is the Nippon Art. Um, these tr usually go for around $750, and these designs are very simple to, um, to do. In fact, I brought a set of tools, and Brian will personally be doing one when this uh, video is over with. Oh, yes, we'll, we'll put that on next week, so, so you'll be able to see. But these are very simple designs, and again, uh, it sort of starts someone into the Machier business where starting out with a $750 pen, in some cases has led up to a $10,000 pen. Hmm. I imagine once you get into, you know, the Machier collection, right. you kind of fall in yeah. deep down the rabbit hole. And there you asked me about who buys these pens. I mean, there's a wide range of people who, you know, obviously pen collectors, but there's also people like Japanese art and mm -hmm. showcase them that way. People do write with these. Others have custom cases made and they just look at them hmm. as art forms. Absolutely, I can see that. Beautiful. Now these nibs, I mean, they're they're Namiki stamped nibs. I mean, are they a similar type of nib as what you'll see on some of the pilot pens? Yeah, this is a 14 karat nib in the um, in the Nippon art. All of the pens in the um, Yukari, Yukari Royale, and Emperor are all 18 karat gold. Okay, and they look larger too. Yes. So these aren't anything you'll see on you know a pilot custom 74 or anything like no, that. No, entirely different nib. Okay. Okay. And then we got some other pens down here too. So let's talk through these. Now these ones, uh, our viewers here might be a little more familiar with these because we've been stocking these regularly since they came out. Right. Um, but let's talk about the technique because they, they are more expensive than normal vanishing points. Correct. And um, we don't have uh, you know, as much rodden in some of the other pens. So can you explain this process? Yeah. Most of your viewers are going to know that the Pilot Capitalist or Pilot Vanishing Point is one of the most functional fountain pens around. Mm -hmm. And so when we make a pen that has rodden in it, we have a lot of dust left over mm -hmm. when they're chiseled out. And so one of the artists decided to do this. Uh, we came up with this about seven years ago, this particular uh, model. And again, every one is going to be different. Mm -hmm. uh, when this goes on, you can see that. It's actually looks like gray dust, mm. and as the lacquer hits it, it brings out the color. So and this is sold very well. So we decided, and it retails for three hundred and sixty. So we decided to do a little bit more intri intricate work, mm -hmm. where we've got the water surface and the stripe, and these retail for eight hundred. Now this gives you the most functional fountain pen, the capless, and a little bit of Machier, and it's still reasonably affordable. Right. And what's the difference? I mean, hopefully it's coming across well, but the difference between, say, you know, 360 and 800 dollars, it's the time involved. It's right? the time involved, and there's there's just a lot more work in here. Mm -hmm. It's the same coat, coating of lacquer, Urushi lacquer, as these do, mm -hmm. but there's just a lot more work because the artist will have the rod and dust in a tube that he'll tap down, but this actually has to be laid in the pen and lacquered over. Absolutely. And you can see, if you look close up on this pen, you can see every single little piece of abalone that's placed in there. Right. And that's all got to be done by hand. Yes. Wow. And how many coats of lacquer would there be on these pens? Uh, about 15. Okay. So not quite as time consuming as Correct. some of the other ones, which so you can start to see kind of, basically it all comes down to 
time yeah, yeah. <laughs> involved. Now let's talk about this next one because this is really one that I've kind of been taken with. And you showed us a video on this um, and provided us with a video which we'll, which we'll do some stuff with um, on the chinkin technique. This particular technique, as Brian said, is chinkin, which it's all carved into the pen and then filled in with gold dust and lacquered over. Uh, there's a series of um, chisels, of knives, that the artist used to cut out every pattern in here. And if, to fully appreciate this, you'll see when, when Brian gets the video up, um, it's just an amazing technique. I've been fortunate enough to see it several times, and it's, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. It is, and, and literally like every single little dot in here has been carved out by hand. Yeah, and that must that must take an incredible amount of time. It's still a four month process, um, but if the artist does make a mistake, there's nothing that they can do. The pen has to be um, discarded. Whereas a macchiate pen, you can somewhat strip the finish down and, mm. and not start over, but you can at least correct a mistake. But quite honestly, I haven't seen a lot of mistakes with these guys. <laughs> I imagine. I mean, how long are they training before they? I mean, it's not like, hey, yeah, we're put an ad on Craigslist for a. Well, Chinkin artist. True, so there there are macchiate schools there, but it's again it's sort of a um, an art form that's that's handed down. Um, a lot of the macchiate artists do not do chinkin, but our master artist Seike Chita um, does a little bit of both. Okay. Um, but it's an entirely different process. Other than the lacquer going on, they use a brush and bamboo tubes to apply the different surfaces here. Mm -hmm. But here again, it's all carved. Mm -hmm. And again, once you see the um, the video that Brian will put up, it's it's quite impressive. Yeah. This particular pen, the Cherry Blossoms, retails for thirteen hundred dollars, and the Cat, which has gone over very well here with Brian's staff, retails for thirty seven hundred. Wow. And some of these pens, you know, I know we got one more to cover here, but some of these pens are huge. Why are they so big? On the Emperors, you can see that the design is pretty intricate, so they need some more room. Right. And also, there is definitely a call for a larger pen. We offer this pen um, without any designs on it. It's a $2,000. Men, some women just like a large pen to write okay. with. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite size is the Akari Royale, because I have a little bit bigger hand, and the design, as you can see, isn't as mm -hmm. intricate. Right. So it's really kind of like a canvas mm -hmm. for the artist. Well, as I said, some people who buy them are just like Japanese art. They really could care less about the pen. Interesting. Yeah. It's got to be difficult because, I mean, when you're working at art and looking at that chinkin video, some of the work is done on flat work, you know, boxes mm -hmm. and things like that. How much more complicated is it for them to do this work on a round object, like a pen? It's more so. Uh, but. These guys are just, they're, they're artists. There's no mm. other way. They're not pen makers, they're artists. Right. Um, and they're very dedicated to their craft. As mm. I said, it's a family business. A lot of, uh, like our, one of our, as I may have mentioned, Mishifumi, his grandfather was, a, was an artist, a pilot. So there's a lot of tradition uh, and there's a lot of passion about it too. They're very serious about this. Oh, no doubt. So are they working exclusively on pens? I mean, imagine, you know, working for the Miki. They're doing well, a lot I, of pen work. When I was like, there last there October, else? for you golf fans, there was a uh, set of drivers in the museum that had Machiae on it. Wow. Um, Machiae started in the seventh century uh, primarily with um, boxes, bowls, dishes, that sort of thing, and it evolved into pens in the in, in the forties. Mm -hmm. um, we've done some um, some pen boxes. We've done cufflinks, uh, a lot of different things, but now they're focusing primarily just on pens. Okay. So let's talk about this last one here, which kind of stands out a little bit from the rest, um, the Sterling Silvers. We've had a long line of Sterlings when we launched Namiki in 94. The Dragon, which is still in the, in the, in the mix, was, was the most popular. And we've added um, different designs th throughout the years. Our latest are the, the Panda and the Komodo Dragon. That's what I'm holding here. It's available in both a uh, fountain pen and a roller. Um, the, the <laughs> Jenny made a face right there <laughs> since I opened up the name. 
And what I found here at Goulet is they're just in the fountain pens. You try to sell them some ball points and roller balls, it's just not going to happen. No, we don't really want to hear anything about no. it. You saw my reaction when I uncapped the other one. I was like, oh, this is, uh, I know, this I know. is unacceptable. Uh, oh, just, 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 no, now just, she turned the camera off. Hide that one, off. yeah, okay. exactly, exactly. Uh, this is an 18 karat inlaid nib. Again, very well balanced. And these you have to polish up, just like any sterling silver. And, and they do come with a polishing cloth in the box, but yes. Okay, but they'll tarnish, you know, over time. Right. So you got to polish them up a little bit. But I like it. They're they're textured, but they're not like so indented that polishing is really a challenge. Right. And how much do these pens go for? Uh, Five ninety eight. That's not that bad. Do you want me to mention the rollerball price? No, I won't. No need. No, okay. No one's interested. <laughs> if you are though, special orders at GooleyPens.com. Right. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that actually feels pretty good. I don't know. You may have to leave these here, John. But we have nine different designs in the uh, in the Sterling. Cool. So you obviously have a lot of gorgeous pens, and you handle these things all day long. Mm -hmm. um, which tends to be your favorite? I actually brought my favorite um, pen. This is the Nightline Moonlight. Um, the original Nightline that came out in 94 was a little bit different. It emulated a city skyline. Where is it? The buildings were going up, and there was gold dust mm -hmm. um, to signify the lights. Uh, then they, they changed it a couple of years ago and brought out the Nightline Moonlight, which is more pronounced uh, abalone, rodden, and again, it's one of the ones that's individually signed. But this is my this is my personal favorite. It's got an 18 karat gold nib, um, medium point, and again, when you do do a pen like this and you're chipping the abalone out. That's where you get all of this. Mm. And so it's it's a uh, waste not want not yeah. in Japan. No doubt. Very cool. So you know these these types of luxury products, you know collector collector grade pens like this, traditionally are sold often in brick and mortar stores. Mm -hmm. um, but clearly, Namiki's been having more of a focus on online presence. They redid their website last year, which mm -hmm. looks phenomenal, by the way. Thank I mean, you. 360 photography and everything. Like, they really, like, I know how much work that is. Mm -hmm. They really put a lot into that. Yeah. It looks fantastic. So I just want to give you props on that. I actually had nothing to do with that. That came to us from Japan. Oh, okay. uh, they wanted all of the divisions to have a, a uniform look. And I remember the first time I saw that, one of the guys had it on his iPad, and he was spinning a goldfish around. I'm like, oh, I have to have that. Yeah. So they sent it over to us, and our uh, our vice president of IT was extremely happy because, like you, he knows how much that costs oh, yeah. to do. We, I mean, so. we've talked about doing 360 photography here ever since we started the company, mm -hmm. and just have never done it because yeah. of how much it goes into it. Yeah. So that looks really good. But also, you know, you're here, and like you brought us down to Florida, mm -hmm. which you know the main thing that I drew out of that whole experience was you you see this hundreds of thousands of feet of G2s mm -hmm. and acro balls and all these other things. And then you see the Namiki and it's like a couple of cabinets yeah. and pens. It's clearly not like, you know, the big money maker right. for Pilot. So, you know, I'm curious to know what is it that's kind of driving Pilot and, and where is the future as they see? Well, Pilot as a whole is an ink company first. We make ink. Well, then we make feed systems and whether it's a, uh, whether it's a fountain pen nib, whether it's a G2 refill, uh, whether it's a precise needle point, the same quality goes into mm -hmm. each pen. So I know if I'm getting a new color in G2, mm -hmm. or if I'm getting a new Emperor, the same quality is going through there. Uh, what we're doing now, I mean, with social media coming on between you know Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, we're getting a lot more exposure now, and we're hopefully going to draw in some some new collectors, some younger collectors, um, and so that's why we're sort of focusing on the online presence now. I see. And that's obviously a big focus for us too. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really excited to be able to showcase these a little better. So um, we're actually gonna take the most of the rest of today and we're gonna train our whole staff right. to talk about these and educate them because education is a huge part of what we do here at Goulet. Um, and clearly you can talk for hours about all the details of these pieces. Days. <laughs> yeah, days. days. If we had days, we would do days. But uh, yeah, that's wonderful. I really appreciate you taking your time to come here and shoot the video. It's my pleasure. I think pleasure. everybody will enjoy this very much, so I appreciate it, John. Thank you for your support, Brian. Absolutely. So you'll be able to see, if not uh, available on our website, we can special order anything that Pilot will offer in the U.S. Yeah, pilotpen.us, and then follow the trail to fine writing and namiki.com, and as Brian mentioned, uh, all of the Machie pens are there, and so you can get a better look at them, but a lot of these will be up on 
on Brian and Rachel's site, and they'll be available for you here. Absolutely. Thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, you should definitely do so, so you can check out more awesome videos like these. This will not be the last time we'll be talking about Namiki for sure. Yep. So thanks so much, everybody, and right on. <laughs>